Welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show. And it's not any old Dirt Shed Show this week, it's Adventure Week, and we're talking about the pioneers of mountain bike adventure. Yes, that is correct, Neil. But don't worry, we have got all your usuals, things like bike vault, fails or sends, and caption contest coming up for you as well. Right, let's get to it. It's the Dirt Shed Show. Woo. This week, we're gonna be talking about the pioneers of adventure riding, those riders that really pushed the limits in mountain biking. And we didn't want to limit what adventure meant, so decided to highlight three different areas. And the first is free ride, because what's more adventurous than chucking yourself off a cliff? I'm not sure what else is, Neil, to be fair, but you're right, free riders, the pioneers of free riders, in fact, the infamous fro riders. Yes, guys like Brett Tippy, Wade Simmons, and Richie Slay. Uh, you know, almost the godfathers of free ride, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. I remember definitely seeing those pictures coming out. It must have been the 90s of like places like Kamloops and Vancouver and Utah, of course, where you know the Rebel Rampage started to really take off. Wade Simmons went there and of course took that win as well. So, you know, they really were the pioneers of the the first type of free riding, definitely. I know. I'm pretty sure I had them on a video or even a poster at some point. That's how that's how far back we're talking. Absolutely. And then moving it on to like exploring pioneers, and there's got to be, you know, one name that's done this again for a long time, but it's Hans Ray, who's just taken places yeah. where your bikes to places where they've never been before. And, you know, and he's still doing that now even. Yeah, yeah. Hans is like, he's done some amazing things for his career. And he obviously trials at the beginning, uh, which we touched on in last week's Dirt Shed. But as uh, his career progressed, he then sort of did a lot more adventure stuff going with guys like Thomas Frischneck, Brian Lopes. Greg Herbold, Danny McCaskill, and Missy Gio. So uh, that's a fair old list of names, and that's not even all of them. Yeah, I even you know really remember that video he made uh, with Danny McCaskill trying to go up uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, and I went to his talk actually a couple of years ago, and it's brilliant to to hear what that guy has done in the last you know 30 years or whatever it's been. Uh, his hands has been there, done that, and is still doing it. Yeah, that guy has got some experiences under his belt, isn't he? That's for sure. But then finally. How far can you push yourself on a mountain bike, Neil? Well, Rebecca Rush seems to think pretty bloomin' far. She is, I've got a full list here of uh, some of her achievements anyway, and it is, it's pretty mind-blowing. Four-time Leadville 100 winner, three-time 24-hour solo mountain bike world champ, uh, and is an endurance monster just like any other, really. She is an absolute uh, mile destroyer. Yeah, she's done some uh, really inspiring things. One of those has got to be uh, the video, if you've seen it, called Blood Road, where she goes to Vietnam on the search uh, for where her father died, actually, in the Vietnam War. And the, the video, actually, I think it's an Emmy Award winning film. That. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. She's, she is an incredible rider and great to see you know, some of the things she's been up to. You know. uh, she's even got that uh, foundation. The Be Good Foundation, yeah. The Be Good Foundation. So it's sort of promoting outdoor exploration and sort of humanitarian services, if you like. So she's really like yeah, at the forefront of pushing the sport and, and trying to help, help people out, which is pretty incredible as well. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, definitely three different areas of adventure riding, but all very inspiring. And that's what, uh, we trying to do, we're trying to do with Venture Week on Germany is trying to inspire people to do something that maybe they haven't thought of. Yeah, definitely. I know, uh, I know I'm going to be doing something, so I'm, it's, it's exciting. But that's enough about talking adventure stuff, Neil. I think it's time we throw over to the news and see what was going down this week. Thanks, guys. Right, let's dive into the news. Um, it's new bike week this week, uh, starting with the new Trek Slash. Uh, 29, 160 mil of travel. Um, it's got down tube storage, a bit like the Specialized. Um, it's an enduro bred race bike, um, but also it's perfect for the everyday trail rider. Um, it's got this new, Fruit shaft shock that's developed by RockShox and it's in conjunction with Trek of course and it's specific to this bike um, and that is a very cool looking bike in general. I really love the colorways too, it looks really really nice, um, bit of a fan of that bike. It's very cool. Um, in contrast to that one maybe, uh, but maybe doing the same job but for less money, more affordability, the Privateer 141 from the British brand. Look at that. 
Maybe if you can't make it up to the Trek Slash, then maybe the Privateer is something to look at. Uh, it's a great looking bike though, again, coming in the 29. Uh, can probably do the same job. It's a pretty cool looking bike. Uh, Canyon have also released specs and colors for the Neuron and Spectral 2021 uh, bikes. The Spectral, which will be uh, 2,199 pounds, um, and the Neuron, which will be 1,849 pounds. Um, both very affordable bikes themselves and always looking great. Uh, fabulous looking colorways there. Very exciting stuff. Now, we're gonna head over to Rick McLaughlin now for uh, EWS update. What you got, Rick? Thank you very much, Martin. Yes, as you can see, the Ligurian Sea is behind me and I am in the beautiful Pietra Liguri. We came straight here after Zerma and the whole team have had a couple of down days of just riding and exploring and finding out a bit more about this stunning part of Italy. Now, big news in terms of the EWS is that we have taken the decision to end our season just up the road in Finale Liguri, where we traditionally do. We do that with full support from our organizers in Petsen Jamnitsa and Montagna de Carux. And it just felt right that we rounded out what has obviously been a difficult 2020 season in the cradle of modern enduro racing that is Finale Liguri. Now I've had a gelato, I've had my feet in the sea. The team and I are fully recharged and we will be bringing you all the action from all the practice sessions, race day itself, as well as all the tech, all the riders right here from Vittoria EWSE and EWS Pietro Liguri. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for the update. Uh, EWS Series 2020 will go down in history all over the place, but hey, they've made it happen. So that's something special. And it's great to have them here on GMBN. Now, lastly, before you go, why don't you head over to the GMBN store after watching the Dirt Shed Show to get your hands on the new Adventure Series hoodies. And we've got an Adventure hoodie uh, sweat, sorry, which has got the Adventure Series logo on the front and the GMBN tag on the back. It's the opposite on the hoodie, I really like, and that detail is on the back on this. Look at that there. It's a very nice bit of merch. Um, obviously, all of the Adventure Series is over in the store, as well as our Stargazer Series, and of course our race tops and all of the other merchandise um, that we love to put out there and love to see you wearing, and we really appreciate the support. Right, okay, that's enough from me and the news. Let's head back to you guys in the show. Right, Neil, it's time for Hacks and Bodges. I know you're not a big singer, so I'll hold the fort on this one. So you ready? Are you sure? You don't have to. You hacks have to. and bodges. Hacks and bodges. Hacks and bodges. Hacks and bodges. What have we pretty got? Good. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's better than mine, definitely, but still <laughs> pretty terrible. <laughs> anyway, on to the first one from Matthew. Check out his bike. He's got what's wow. that? A Trek Checkpoint. That must be a gravel bike, I'm guessing, with that name. And a common yeah. slash. And he's made. This was his dining room. <laughs> now it's a bike room. Oh, oh. Uh, some premium lumber. We don't call it lumber over here. We've got timber or wood. Uh, some iron pipe. Spent less than 75 US dollars, including the battery powered light. What do you think? Hack or bodge? Uh, it's got to be a hack, surely. Yeah, that's a good hack. I mean, I, d I don't know what his, you know, his other half might think of the living room now, the di uh, sorry, the dining room now, but that's tidy. Keeps things neat, doesn't it? He's got the GCN kit. He's got uh, a GCN sticker at the top. And he's got a little, you see where he stacked his spare tubes? I think that's pretty cool, actually. So let's have a look at the next one. Igor from Latvia, uh, and he's, what's he done? He's wrapped his bars with another bit of a roadie crossover. Got some roadie bar tape. Uh, so basically he's got a prayer position, I guess when you're on the top, almost like a triathlete, tri bar style yeah. thing. Uh, for 24 hour, 24 hour races when you need a bit of extra comfort and I guess you need to move around on the bike a little bit. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a good little uh, good little bodge that, is it, should we say? I mean, it, I, I would be more tempted to call it a hack if the number plate was on straight, but that, that number plate <laughs> makes me think that anything on that bike is a bodge. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, I, that's a little pet peeve of mine, is having a wonky number plate. Uh, this one is, what do you call them, a chain holder. or they, This is more of a roadie thing, isn't it? So this is uh, Stephen yeah. on his Santa Cruz Bronson. Um, it's a fishing line reel. Use it, so basically you can sort of lube your chain and work on your chain when you've got your back wheel out without wrecking your axle. Yeah. 
That's a good idea, isn't it, actually? I've not seen that before. Oh, it's a big roadie thing, that. Yeah. Um, Is it? A chain keeper, that's what they call them. Uh, but yeah, I've never seen anyone do it with a mountain bike. But it's a hack. Is it? I suppose it is. That's a good hack, yeah. Nice one. Pretty good. Uh, Hacks and Bodges is actually my favourite part of the show, except for the singing bit. Uh, but keep sending them in. Use the uploader down below for sending your bikes for the bike vault, your Hacks and Bodges. Uh, if you want to be involved with the show, that's how you get them to us. That's some great Hacks and Bodges there, Neil. But what have we still got to come up on the show this week? Well, we've got all the viewer submitted videos, we've got fails and sends, we've got the bike vault, of course, we'll see what is in there this week, if you've got any super nice bikes, hopefully. Uh, plus, we've got some more adventure content stuff, so keep your eyes peeled. Oh, yeah, some good uh, fails. Are they ever good fails? I guess they are sometimes, but yeah, some big ones this week. <laughs> Only if you're watching, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> right, on to the caption contest where the funniest or best caption wins a GMBN water flasky thing, whatever they're called. That's, yeah, you're correct. <laughs> we have Maximum Dave. In first, it says, Blake, day 134 of lockdown. Today, I daydreamed my bike was a woman. <laughs> wow. wow, okay. <laughs> so it's a pretty strong daydream. Um, okay, we also have Andrew Howe 5. When you use the wrong toilet brush to air your hydration pack. Now, this is a reference to a, uh, well, I suppose a bodge that was on last week's show, so go check that out, where someone made something to dry their the hydration bag, it looks suspect. But anyway, what have we got? What other one have we got, Neil? That seems risky using anything that looks like a toilet brush to do anything with a hydration pad, but yes. Uh, next one comes from MT Ballard, who says 4 a.m. at the cider farm. This was Blake's face. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> right, Rich, pick a winner for the flask this week. Uh, I mean, all good ones, so thank you everyone for sending those in. But I think we're going to have to go with Andrew Hull 5. When you use the wrong toilet brush to air your hydration pack. Congratulations, mate. I like it because you watched last week. So you have won the, uh, how did you put it, Neil? The hydration flasky thing. Exactly. Nice one. There you go. Nice one. Right, this week's uh, picture to get involved with the caption contest. Here it is. Leave your best down below in the comments. Coming up on the channel this week, yes, it is Adventure Week. Uh, you know, this is the Dirt Shed Show kicking it off pretty much. Uh, but we've got how to ride your bike without getting tired tomorrow. So if you're going on a big adventure, this one might just help you out. I'm gonna watch that, that's for sure, I know that. Yes, we've also got your top 10 bike packing tips. So everything you sort of need to know to get started if you're thinking of your your first bike packing adventure, um, or actually if you're an experienced bike packer, you might pick up a new tip or trick you didn't know. I would totally recommend it. If you've never done it, I mean, I'm fairly new to bike packing. It's in the last couple of years with GMBN that I've done it and I've absolutely loved it. I've done some wicked trips and I've really uh, come to enjoy it. Uh, and we've also got a video on Friday, which is hopefully going to inspire you uh, viewers to go out and do your own adventures. So we've got our, our top list of mountain bike adventures and a bit of a bucket list of things to do. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, actually, finally on Sunday, we've got a nice feature for you. Myself and Blake go bike packing, myself for the very first time, in fact, on the Jurassic Coast. Yeah, which is pretty cool. So down the south of England along the Jurassic Coast there. Hopefully you might find a fossil or two. And not just old uh, people. Yeah. Old people. Uh, and uh, yeah, Blake's doing a night ride as well. I think with Brendan Fairclough. So that's well, well worth watching. Plus, a uh, bit of a shout out here. Uh, we love your support. And if you go over to the GMBN store, we've got some pretty cool uh, adventure themed t-shirts in there. Uh, this is one of them actually, Into the Woods. 
but there's a load of cool t-shirts over there so uh we love your support thank you very much for buying t-shirts and stickers and all those cool things right rich into the bike vault do you have the bell to ring for the super nices if we have any this week i'm hoping this little bad boy is going to get a good ring a ling a ding ding well, it's been a bit battered, the bell, but it, it does ring somewhat. So let's get in there. Uh, okay. Starts off with a bike from Max. This is in Lemonade, I don't know how you say that, in Germany. Uh, that's a propane spin drift. Uh, yeah. Custom decals, 220 mil rotor up front. That's a big one. Cush core, and it's got a damn sexy voice, apparently. I didn't know bikes could have sexy voices, but that one has. Wow, he's been daydreaming. Uh, <laughs> I like those because I like how the, the shock is positioned vertically behind the seat tube and how it's actuated. So that's, that's pretty cool if you ask me. I wish we could see it side on. It kind of reminds me a little bit, I know this is going to sound weird, but from that angle it reminds me a little bit of a, a Santa Cruz Nomad or the Specialized Epic. Even though the shock's in a completely different position, it kind of looks a bit similar. I think it looks really good actually. It looks like it's got some wide bars on there. Yeah, and that 220 rotor up front means he is, uh, he's ready to get wild, isn't it? I reckon that's super nice, Rich. I'm ready to ring. Go, first one, blooming neck. Right, next bike. Uh, this is Russell's GT Sensor Carbon 275. Lots of Hope upgrades in Adelaide, South Australia. Nice, but yeah, yeah. He's got quite a lot going on here, isn't there? There's, the, there's some bar ends I can see on there. Is that a D-lock as well? It well, is. Yeah. Look, it's, look at the helmet. There's like two purple Hope lights, I think. Well, they must, I don't know. But he's got some purple uh, Hope uh, pedals and cranks there as well. And stem and, and brakes. Flipping it. Uh, he says, Russell says this is his antidepressant commuter. That's pretty cool. Nice. Whatever puts a smile on your dial. <laughs> yeah. Solid nice, I reckon. Yep. Very nice, mate. Uh, right, next by Luke on his 2019 Identity Metal in purple and yellow. Mm -hmm. That's a cool spot. It is. It's Manchester. Nice. Uh, picture up at his local spot 10 minutes away. I mean, what a stunning local spot to have. Look at that with the lake in the background. I think it's nice. What do you reckon? Nice or super nice? Uh, that's nice. I like the colour. That's a, that's a nice bike. Good job, Luke. Wow. Move on to the next one. Oh, this is God. Eric's Moose Knuckle. I oh, know, sorry, it's a just Moose fat bike in Winnipeg. I guess if you're going to have a fat bike, Winnipeg is probably the place to have one. Uh, I was saying, we are pandemic riders. Our whole family picked up new bikes this summer. Both kids, four and six, learned to ride this year, and I haven't biked for 15 years. Wow, wow. that's nice. cool. Uh, we also watch GMBN together as a family, uh, and we love Blake and Neil's bike packing trips. Sweet, that is amazing, and that's a one hell of a bike packing bike for sure. I mean, is that a water bottle on the fork leg? It is. It that's like I think you. I believe you call that a growler. Wow, well, well, I've called them a few things over my time. <laughs> um, tan wall fat bike tires. I've never seen them before. No, they're humongous. Uh, I do you know what? I like the colour, and I am a sucker for a tan wall. And he's got a massive bottle in the middle of the bike as well, I didn't notice that. Yeah, he, he goes out for a long time. I mean, I'm going to push the boat out here and say that's a super nice. For the tan walls, Eric, you get a super nice, mate. Well done. Cool, what have we got next? We have got Austin on his, his Visago Jabberwocky. I can't... I've never heard of that bike. Have you heard of that bike? No. No, that one, you... you educating us there. I've not heard of that. Um, in Sugarland, Texas. I mean, Sugarland, Texas. What a great name. Uh, yeah, he's also saying he's, this is summer, this bike's been out for the first time uh, since 2012. Yeah, wow. So it's cool that it's people bringing the bikes out, the old ones. That's cool. Yeah, red wheels, single speed, rigid seat post. Uh, what else have we got? Double, I mean, double it, feels like, double it feels like it should have a rigid fork if it's single speed, but... I know what you mean. Yeah, nice. I think that's a nice. Well, I think I agree. Yeah? Ooh, yeah. Next bike, that. Ben's Canyon Strive. That doesn't look like a Strive to me. It's the old, what, 2016 shape one. It's changed slightly, the frame layout. But it's the graphic on the down tube that caught me out, because I've never seen that before. That must be an added graphic. 
Um, what does he say? Ben says, I bought a battered Canyon Strive from my mate. It was really badly scratched and multiple parts broken. Uh, so use nitromores and a wire brush drill attachment to strip the paint off. Uh, Gosh. Why? Is that recommended? Done a good job. It looks, I mean, you've put, you've, yeah, you put Henry to shame there. I, used, I think that's a really good job of sort of fixing up an old bike and making it look yeah. like a new one. So it doesn't look like an old bike at all. You, no, that looks, that's a tidy looking bike. That is a tidy looking bike. Uh... I think, I think you, uh, Ben gets super nice for the efforts he's gone to, to renovate an old bike there. Do you know what? I agree. Good job, Ben. You've made that canyon come back to life. Right. Uh, Charlie oh, wow. has got a Linsky. I think all Linskys are titanium, unless I'm wrong. I know, I thought they were. Yeah, 165 titanium frame. This is uh, Western wow. North Carolina. Just finished up my first bike build and got to take it out on some old school steep backcountry trails. That is cool. I said, yeah, that is that is tidy. They, don't those Linskys have a, I can't remember what it is. Maybe it's got it on his list of parts here. Those built in sort of clever droppers. What are they? Uh... Oh, the one up. Are they one up? Yeah, it says one up dropper. I think you're right. No, not the. No, no, it's like a. Oh, you know how the collar's built in? Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know what they call it. The name's gone out. I, well, name's this, gone out. this says one up post, so guess not on that one. But uh, titanium bikes for me almost always get super nice. What do you reckon, Rich? <laughs> yeah. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. Who am I to go against tradition? I like that a lot. I like the few little bits of anodized blue on there. And has he got the E wing cranks? Are those E wings? Oh, has he? They're flipping nice. He has as well. They are fancy, very expensive. All right, cranks. Lucky, I can see you drooling a bit. Here we go, Neil. There you go, bud. That's super nice. Finish it off with a, a retro beast. This is a Yeti 575 in London. This is Omar's bike. Omar's bike. This is again rebuilt after laying dormant for a few years. Nice. I t I'm liking how everyone sort of COVID is is reinvigorated everyone to get out on their bikes, no matter what they are, from Yetis to Jabberwockies. <laughs> that Yeti, although to me it does look a bit retro, nothing wrong with the retro bike, of course, oh. that, that would have been a pretty special bike not so long ago. Uh, so it's cool to see it. Yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of people riding around uh, my hometown on, on super old bikes. It's great to see them out and getting used. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nice one. I think that's a nice for me. That is, I, I, I think what, I agree. What, what do you reckon, Neil? No. no, I think I agree. So it would have been super nice a few years ago. Now it's just a nice. But uh, thanks for sending your bikes in. Some cracking bikes this week. Uh, hopefully we've inspired you a bit with some adventure week stuff. So maybe next week you can send us more of your ad adventure bikes. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a, a single speed, long distance epic bike or more fat bikes. Whatever. Let's see them. Right, Neil, that is it for today's Dirt Shed adventure themed adventure week. Uh, thank you very much. It's been great fun being on again. Cheers, Rich. It's been nice to be in the TV yeah. in, the, in the shed this week. <laughs> sort of trapped in Somewhat there. different. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, but I will say it again, uh, there's loads of adventure theme stuff over on the GMBN store, so uh, go and check it out. You'll miss out if you don't see it. They are selling like hotcakes, I hear. Um, Tune into the channel to obviously see lots of cool adventure themed stuff, some adventures at night, uh, some bike packing trips me and Blake are doing. And well, I think that's about it, isn't it, Neil? Yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you later. <laughs>